Welcome back to another episode on Connie Celica, our 1977 Toyota Celica. Today is a very big day. We're gonna wire up Beamsy here with a custom harness, and then we're gonna plug in this bad boy. Anytime you do an engine swap, one of the challenges you're gonna face is how to wire it up. And for that, we've turned to Panic Wire. They are a company based in Portland, Oregon that make custom harnesses for all kinds of old school Toyotas that are having newer engines plopped into their engine bay. So like what we're doing here with Connie, a Beams motor is a pretty popular swap with Corolla guys. With Celica guys. Uh, even MR2 guys. And Mark from Panic Wire can build you a custom harness to make that job much, much easier. So this is a fully plug and play harness that he built for my beams for this exact application. So I was able to like give him some ideas about how I wanted things routed. He built a little extra, you know, a sub harness for the fans, for example, because we're running an electrical fan. It's all new connectors. It's all mil spec wiring. It's all nicely wrapped, nicely labeled. This is like their pro level harness and uh, it's actually a really good value. It's under a thousand dollars for a, a harness of this level. I think it's really good value. And he does have other options where you can go for like a more entry level price by doing less of the fancy stuff. You can send him in your old beams harness and he'll reuse your old connectors, for example. So there's ways to cut costs there if you're interested in doing that. So Link is one of his preferred ECUs for beam swaps and for very good reason. Obviously, it's a very reputable brand and a very powerful ECU, but it's also one of the few ECUs on the market that can control the somewhat odd and complicated dual VVTL system that the Beams uses. It's a bit of an oddball dual variable timing system and Link has it completely cracked and controlled. So that's a big part of why we opted to go with the Link ECU. This is their Fury model, which is a higher end one. It's actually very powerful. It can control a 20B three rotor motor or a six cylinder engine. So it's kind of overkill for our beams, but I wanted to have room to grow if, let's say I get stupid and I want to throw a 1J in there. I want to throw a 2J in there. This will control that perfectly. It's also got a bunch of motorsports oriented features on it like traction control. It's even got cruise control. So. As a streetcar, it might be kind of handy to try out the cruise control on here. It has a built-in digital wideband reader. So literally just run the wideband to the harness, which Mark mapped out for me. And this thing will already have full control via the wideband, which is pretty, pretty awesome to have that built in. That's a quick uh, rundown of what we're working with today. I think it's time to slap this harness on and see how it fits, BT. I think what we're going to start off here with is putting our main harness plugs through the firewall and I'm not sure what this is for DP but I think it's going to be a good spot to not run for anything right there. now so yeah no go. it's not you're right go for it <laughs> no it's a perfect spot that's probably the intended spot just put our wires through this is number 1 Always good to start with the coil packs, you know? Yeah, it's a good center center point to yeah, start. And I'm assuming this will route on this side. This intake. Nope, so that's for the other side. There's labels, PT. There's I labels. Know. I love it. Just going off the, the cuff here, you know? Just winging it. Just giving her. Trying to find everything. That's actually a whole separate harness. This is the exhaust side. That is properly labeled. This is for our wide band. Yep. So we'll be uh, running that. Dump that down there. Down into, into the header. Well, the harness is installed. That was a pretty quick and easy job. Boy, does it fit well. It dropped in there perfectly, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Everything plugs in as expected. Everything routes beautifully. On to installing our new TPS sensor. Got this from Battle Garage Racing Services on their website. Toyota Part. I think it's like 40, 50 bucks. It's not cheap, but it's not expensive enough to try to make this mangled mess work. Yeah, that thing's destroyed. That guy was, oh, do we epoxy this up and try to like make it, you know, but no. whatever, not worth it. New sensor. Not worth the risk. Pop that in now, but before I do, 
There were some questions in a previous episode about whether or not our vacuum lines for the distribution lock were gonna clear the starter. Starter's in there now, clears plenty of room. And there were also questions about the brake booster hose. Since the booster uses a 3 8 hose and we were using a one inch NPT bar fitting on here. But with a little muscle, a little WD-40, that 3 8 hose slides right on there, no problem. I don't know if Vibrant makes a fitting I don't, think they do. I don't think they do. So I don't know though. I could be wrong. If they do and you want to be like 3 8 to NPT or, get the or whatever one. size, yeah. So yeah, we are plumbed. We are wired. And what about the whole map sensor nipple deal? Because I mentioned that we were going to run it off the, the last ITV. Oh yeah, good point. Yeah, we did get a lot of good feedback on that as well. Everyone seemed to agree that for the map, it's best to pull vacuum off the distribution block rather than off of a single ITV. Yeah, that's what I figured. We'll get a more consistent readout that way. So we'll use that little barbed fitting that goes into the end of the distribution block. As a matter of fact, why don't we throw that in there right now, Pete? It's gonna solve all our problems, PT. Wow. It's funny actually, because <laughs> we're really only gonna use the map for like cruising throttle tip in, like cruising behavior. It's not even gonna be used really much for tuning an ITV setup like this, but it should maybe help a little bit with. I think it'll smooth things smooth out. Smooth things yeah. out a bit basically, yeah. right? So it's. It's not it's, a bad idea to have. It's, it's worth having it in the mix, but. Um, it's not a make or break deal for us, I don't think. And um, I should also mention that we have a idle speed control motor and a little sub harness that'll be going in. That's another uh, upgrade that we have ordered from Panicwire. It actually uses a Ford idle speed control motor and that will give us the best possible tunability for uh, idle quality and all that good stuff. So we'll show you that in a future episode. Meanwhile, I'm going to crank this thing in here and then I'll move on to putting that TPS in and then... Uh, TP, let's get to installing the ECU yeah, here. Yeah, I think we got to jump right. inside and start figuring yeah. out where to mount that up. And get ready to do that. Actually, before we get down to the, uh, the real work over there, we're going to do some sticker tuning on our cabinets. I must say, Link has some very nice stickers. And I should also mention that they sent me one of their uh, non-terminated flying leads so it was a harness uh, that plugs directly into that Link ECU that uh, Market Panic could then use as the basis for building me that custom harness. What do you think, PT? Right in the middle here? No, you don't do it in the middle. Over yeah, the side? There you go. You got some stagger going? Yeah. My square? God, you only get one shot at this. I'm nervous. Yeah. PT, I think you've done it. All right. I think you have finally gotten one straight. Wait, Peter. Don't panic, we've got one more sticker All to right. do. Oh, the dad jokes are strong Sheesh. today. How do you get a squirrel down from the tree? I don't know, huh? Pull down your pants and show them your nuts. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I think you're good. Straight-ish? Oh yeah, get on there. I have an even bigger panic one that I'm gonna put on the Beams engine cover. That's how they do their cars and it the, the font they used, I think, is like the yeah, same as like the, the Beans, Beans font, yeah. so it's kind of Super cool. Shows Good on that. them. Yeah, it's a really nice design. There's always satisfaction when you're plugging in... Quality components. Exactly, man. That feels good. In there, yeah. So, DP, we're just going to drop this on the ground here. Yeah. We're, uh, we're good, right? Just, just like that, so there, people yeah. can kick it every time they get in there. Yeah, just zip tie it to yeah. the bolt somewhere. Yeah, right here, right here. Right yeah. here. Yeah. Done? Nah. No, 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 <laughs> we're, we're gonna make this look good. Yes, we are. And uh, what I'm thinking is, you can tell me if you like this idea, but if we mount it right in, in this area box. here, yeah. so it's right behind the glove box, so when the glove box opens, Bam. you can see Showtime. your ECU. Yeah, I love it. And uh, I think we also have to put a PDM in here. We do. We do have a race pack smart wire PDM. Yeah, so. so maybe if we mount that next to it, mm -hmm. you'll have easy access to both if need be. Yeah, I like And the that. routing for the wiring shouldn't be too difficult since there's nothing behind yeah, here. Yeah, it's all the <laughs> cavity back in there. Yeah, so. Yeah, man. But, uh, yeah, so let's do that. That'll be cool. Nice little showpiece, pop the glove box. Exactly. Show people the good stuff under there. Now it's just a matter of fabricating a panel here. A bracket or something? I think something? it's time to check the hoard. Oh, the I hoard. a bunch of metal stashed away that may fit into here. Look at what I found. This is pretty much the perfect piece of aluminum. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's already kind of been pre-bent in a certain, this way here, which is gonna fit nicely behind the dash. And 
what I'm working on is mounting our link ECU bracket so it'll drop right in like that and look at that it's gonna look pretty damn that good gonna be nice yeah what was that piece of metal off of I think it was uh, off of an FRS okay this is like a actually a, a heat shield that goes around the fans or whatever oh, all right that have been hoarding from back in the day when we had a, an HKS intake on a previous FRS back in the magazine days Here's the finished product. Really, I didn't have to do that much work to this piece of metal. I just added a bracket here that'll bolt into the back and a hole here that will be able to put a screw and nut through to kind of hold it in place like this. So let's show you what that looks like. Oh, would you look at that? Damn! These are mounted up, they're ready to go. So. I think we're good with that DP. Yeah, it looks great, man. Yeah. Well, plugging in our alternator. I did the uh, auto parts store exchange so we have the right alternator with the right plug on it. I'm just going to plug that guy in there, although I apparently have the plug upside down because 50-50 chance on that. There we go. Damn. Snapped in. I also picked up the uh, water neck. We had to uh, change the bung size out to the right size for the sensor that uh, Panic Wire sent, so that was done. Got our water temp sensor in place. Yes, we do. We've got a little bit of cleaning up here to do because we removed that big bulky factory water neck back in the vibrant header build off. So we'll clean that up. But uh, other than that, man, I think we are wired. ECU is mounted. That race pack smart wire system is in there too, which we will show you in detail in the next episode, along with a bunch of other goodies from race pack. So we're calling this one a wrap. Thanks for watching. We really appreciate all the support. If you like our swag, go to our e-store, check it out. Maybe consider a Patreon donation of a dollar or two. Help us keep this uh, giant shop running smoothly. And I think we're getting close to seeing this guy back, back in action too. The Moose, Moose is will coming. Be back. We got some rear brake stuff to do with him and uh, front sway bar and some other goodies. So don't worry folks, Moose is coming and you're even gonna see some Ken Wagon. For you Ken Wagon fans out there, he's coming too. So thanks again for watching. See you in the next one. Mm-hmm.